my message I started last week's series from the pit to the palace. Amen. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't list, listened to part one, get, catch up with us. You'll be absolutely blessed. We're talking about the life of Joseph. And we spoke last week on the first point that, um, you know, um, which I'll recap for a few minutes and then we'll carry on with number two. But we said last week we looked at the life of Joseph and seen how God, the great planner, was maneuvering and orchestrating his life, bringing him into the fullness of the dream God had for him. And that same God is still planning your life today. He's planning your life. He's the great planner. God knows where you're at. He knows how to get you to where you need to be. But you need to work with him. Amen. Jeremiah 29, 11, New Living Translation. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. So whatever stealing, killing and destroying is and disaster is from the devil. Whatever is bringing life and life more abundantly is from God. So he has plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. The message is, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. And yes, sometimes in this plans, as we're walking out this journey, like Joseph, maybe people have abandoned you. Maybe family, friends, maybe your ex-husbands. Amen? Abandoned you. Don't just look straight. But God will take care of you. Amen. Amen. Maybe they didn't leave you in their world. You know, where we grew up, they never left worlds. They left bulls. You know what I mean? So maybe they never left you in the world. But you know what? God will take care of you. Romans fifteen thirteen. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm praying for you. That's what we prayed for you today. That the God of hope will fill you today with joy and peace. And that you'll abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because many times hopelessness sets in when we've prayed and we've stood and we've endured. And nothing yet has happened in the natural. We tend to want to give up hope. But God, the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And you are abounding in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we said last week, number one, Joseph was forsaken. Say, Joseph was forsaken. So his brothers were consumed with hatred, envy, and jealousy. In fact, hatred, I said last week, and envy and jealousy will blind you. They were blinded by hatred. They were blinded by envy and jealousy. And it makes sense because now I read even this morning, 1 John 2, verse 9 to 11, it says, He who hates his brother is in darkness. And he does not know where he's going and he stumbles. And he doesn't know which way to go because hatred blinds you. When you walk, when you're not walking in love and you're walking in hate, then you, 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 you're stumbling spiritually. And you, the people wondering why it's not working, why it's not happening, why it's not coming together. It's because they are operating in a place outside the realm of love, outside the realm of God. Because God's realm is a realm of love. And when you're walking in love, you're walking in the light. And that wicked one can't touch you. Amen. So these guys were blinded by that. They wanted to kill him and get him out of the way. But instead, they threw him into a pit and eventually sold him as a slave. And he landed up in Egypt. Verse 1, Genesis 39. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph. And he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house, and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Lester was handsome in form and appearance. (laughs) Amen. You must see yourself in the scriptures, God. Amen. So here we see that the blessing worked independently of his environment and his circumstances. 
The man was a slave. He never even had his own clothes and anything. And yet he was a successful man and the blessing was on him. And the blessing worked independently of the system and where he was at. So I'm saying to you, you have the blessing. And it will work any way you live. Where in fact, it works best when it looks like all hell is breaking loose. The blessing works. The blessing is working. And you have to have faith in the blessing. Amen. It's the blessing that makes you rich. So God placed Joseph in a house, a company, a place with people who were not serving his God. They were serving other gods. The God of uh, idolatry. They, they were serving other gods. And I'm saying to you many times we want to run away from certain companies and certain houses and certain places because you know, listen to me, that company's blessed because you're there. They, God needs you there. You are called to be a light and a blessing there. Like Joseph, he prospered in the midst of ungodliness. And you might be surrounded by ungodly people, but you are the light. And the Lord is with you. You will succeed in that company. You will succeed in that business because the blessing is on you. The blessing is with you. Amen. Say, the blessing is with me. So when the blessing is functioning, guess what? Staff get blessed. Departments start working better. Goods start being protected. Stealing stops, corruption stops, order begins to manifest because the blessing is there. That's what happened with Joseph. Potiphar's house began to prosper since that man came there. Because everything began to just be in order. And I remember when I came to a particular uh, uh, company that uh, I worked for, uh, a place, and um, I was the bookkeeper and I had to start checking, you know, all the things and so forth. And so the Spirit of God will just enlighten me and open my eyes to things happening, man. It's a, it was supernaturally. I mean, this one particular lady is always going every week to go buy the coffee and the milk and the sugar. And they come and they drop off. So now with me, I'm always just like that. I'm always checking slips and I'm always checking, did they charge me the right thing? So I go look at the goods there. The Spirit just said, go check. As I go check, I say, oh, two bottles of Nescafe coffee, but I only see one here. So I called the lady. I said, where's the other Nescafe bottle? Uh, uh, uh. I don't know. They must have forgotten to give it to me or charged me. I don't know what happened here. So she, she said, no, okay, I'll go sort it out. She takes it. Wasn't long. She brings another bottle of Nescafe coffee. They say, no, they gave it to me. Yeah, we know where that Nescafe bottle keeps on going to that place where she was living. You see what I'm saying? And from there, that corruption stopped. Because the blessing is at work. You and I have the blessing. We are called to stop Satan's stealing, killing, and destroying when we show up there. And people will want to hire you because they think, this man, since he's here, this woman, since he's here, things are just working well. You have the blessing. Say, I have the blessing. Amen. Amen. You have the blessing. You're blessed. Proverbs 29, to when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When we are in authority, the people rejoice. God wanted Joseph to be there in authority because he needed his people to survive and thrive and to flourish and to protect his people. So when you are in the place where God has planted, you are blessed and others will be blessed. So stop seeing yourself as just a worm and just a no good. No, God sent you there, not so that you can struggle like them, but so that they can succeed like you. See it like that. You have the blessing. God sent you there so you can prosper in that situation. Amen. Are you here? Amen. Now listen, you might not be in the palace yet, but you and I must be faithful in Potiphar's house. Some people just, they want to skip the house, they want to skip this process, and they want to go straight to the palace, and they want the mic. And I'm thinking, you come yesterday and you already want the mic. You haven't served, you haven't been serving for 17 years, you know, nobody sees you. We must serve. And, and this is the thing with many people of this generation. They just, wanna, they just want to be on top, but they don't want to serve. What about people that have got a company or a business for 20 years, 25 years? Now they become CEO. And they never just arrived. They were faithful there. So it's so important for people to know that you must go through the process. Amen? Amen. So Joseph practiced and used his gift in Potiphar's house. He used his gift in the prison, which qualified him to use his gift in the palace. Some people just want to go straight to the palace. No, we must go through the process. Why? Because God blesses and promotes faithfulness. He doesn't bless giftedness. All of us have received a gift. The gift is a gift. You never earned it. But God, doesn't, God blesses faithfulness. 
He said, well done, good and faithful servant, not well done, good and gifted servant. We all got to give, but God looks at character. Faithfulness has got to do with your character. It's one of the fruit of the Spirit. That's what God is looking for. A, a faithful man, a faithful woman will abound with blessings. We must be faithful. Faithful there where God placed you and stay there where God placed you. And then till you're ready and then God will come and fetch you. David was out looking after the sheep. They overlooked him. They ignored him. They never thought this man can be qualified to be a king. But he just kept on looking after the sheep, being faithful. And Samuel said, we're not going to sit until he comes here. Go and fetch him. And when they went and fetched him, they said, this is he. Anoint him. He's the one. So stay where you are. And when you're ready, God will come and fetch you. Amen. He was forsaken. He was forsaken by his family, by his brothers. Amen. But listen to me, you might be in that place where you, I spoke already last week about it. Maybe you've been forsaken. Amen. And, 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 and family has forsaken you and friends and business people. But listen to me, it is the process that prepares you for the palace. It is that process that prepares you for the palace. So number two, today we're going to look at Joseph was falsely accused. He was forsaken, he was falsely accused, he was forgotten, but then he was favored. Not then, he, he just came into the fullness of his favor. He always had the favor. So God prospered Joseph even in slavery, so that his master put him in charge of his estate. But then his master's wife falsely accused Joseph of assaulting her, and he was thrown into prison. As soon as God promotes you, here comes the devil to try and bring you down. He wants to strip you of that blessing. That's what he tried to do with Joseph. He's seen this man is anointed. This man has the blessing. This man, if he stays in his place, he's going to prosper and turn things and change things. And now he's trying to set up temptation for him to get him to fall and to, and to fail. So look at verse 7 of Genesis 39. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not know what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Not sin against you, against God. He knew that should be our attitude, that we, it's not you know who's watching me? No, God's watching us. Amen? I wonder who's checking, checking, checking. No, no, God's checking. And he, we must have a reverence. And a, that's why Joseph never sinned because he reverenced and honored God. He feared God. He knew God was watching him. And we must have that same attitude that God's watching us. That we don't need to go and sin behind the, behind the fence there. Amen? So he was not going... Um, he also had a dream. His dream, his purpose kept him also from sinning. He was not going to destroy his dream for a few minutes of pleasure. That should be our attitude, I mean. But here's some good news for someone who's here or online who missed it. Listen to me. God was at the window and he saw the whole thing if that happened. Or if you sinned. Listen to me. God was there. And I'm saying to you this morning, no matter what you've done, no matter how you missed it, now, no matter what kind of sin you might have committed, all you need to do is repent and forgive yourself. Repent and forgive yourself. When you confess your sin, that's not when God finds out about it. That's when you get rid of it. So get rid of it right there, right then, and forgive yourself for things that happen. But we cannot live in condemnation and guilt. Amen. But thank God, look at verse 10, Joseph, so it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day. Yo, this woman's a relentless man. She's persistent. She didn't even have a name. Do you know that? We can call a predator. <laughs> this woman was after this man. Yo, yo, yo. She spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not heed her to lie with her, to be with her. I'm telling you she was persistent. But listen, you and I must be persistent and resist Satan's temptation. Because your persistence will wear down the enemy's resistance. Joseph's story would definitely have been different if he had gone with that woman. Verse 11, but it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was inside that she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me, but he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. 
A good run is better than a bad stand. Run. Guys, run, run, run. Woman, run, run, run. Run from sin. Run. Why? Because sin will destroy your dream. Sin will destroy the blessing on you. It will not destroy, it will hinder the blessing. But it can destroy your dream. So I'm saying you and I shouldn't be playing around with sin. Why? Sin can take you further than you wanted to go. Sin will take you, will keep you longer than you wanted to stay. And sin will cost you more than you wanted to pay. So we don't want to play around with that. Amen. We want to be quick to repent when we miss it. And so verse 13, and so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them saying, see, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. He came into me to lie with me and I cried out with a loud voice. And it happened when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. Now think about it. Only God was there, this woman and him. It was his word against hers. And you know, sometimes you can't defend yourself to people. Sometimes you're so innocent in the situation and it's your word against theirs. What do you do in the case like that? Because nobody else knows, nobody else sees, but God was there. And you may be feeling the pain of a false accusation today. But God knows the truth and will bring justice on your behalf. Amen. Proverbs 12, 19 says, The truthful lip shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. It's for a moment. Don't let, you know, listen to this quote. In the war between falsehood and truth, falsehood may win the first battle, but truth wins the war. Sometimes you get in falsely accused. It's that lying tongue is just for a moment. Don't rise up against them. Walk in love like Joseph and forgive them. And I'm telling you, the truth will be established. And eventually it will come out. No. This, you know, it's amazing how things can turn. Isaiah 54, 17, you live in translation says, But in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me, I the Lord has spoken. And in the name of Jesus, I take authority today and I silence every accusation against you. In the name of Jesus, every devil that's been accusing you, every threat, every judgment, every accusing word, we silence it today in the name of Jesus. And your God will vindicate you. Your God will defend you. Your God will speak up for you. Because no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. You the righteousness of God. This is the benefits that belong to the righteousness of God. This is our benefit. And we declare no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. Amen. Just stand your ground. Verse 16 of Genesis 39. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with words like these, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came in to me to mock me. So it happened as I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me after this manner, that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he was there in the prison. Wow. Have you ever faced false accusations where despite doing the right thing, you were punished as if you had done wrong? And no matter how often you try to defend yourself, your version of the story is still not believed. It's painful, that one. Sure, it can be painful. Especially when you get accused and you know it, you never did it, you know. And um, the same thing happened with Jesus. He was falsely accused when he stood before Pilate. And he said, are you not going to say anything? Look at what they're saying about you. And he kept quiet. You know why he kept quiet? No matter what he would have said at that moment, they still wouldn't have believed him. He waited for his father to judge righteously for him. And that's what I'm saying to you. You wait for your heavenly father to judge righteously. You can't change the minds of what people think about you. You have to let God change their minds about you and what they think. You trying to say, no, but I didn't even mean that. That's not what I said. That's not what I meant. And you're trying to, no, 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 no. Just be quiet. Pray. I'll show you now the instruction how to do it. Pray and let God defend you. I'm telling you, it's, it's when you do it God's way, all of heaven will back you. Listen to this. Be mindful not to judge others by assuming that the difficulties and challenges they face are the result of sin in their lives. 
You know how many people accused us of being in sin when things were not going right for us? Our house was auctioned, our electricity was off for 10 months, all kinds of things happening to us. It was a long period of trial and challenge. And people thought we missed it, we in sin, and yet I was in the perfect will of God at that time. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33 verse 1, Now the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah while he was shut up in the prison. The word of the Lord was coming to me while I was in that situation. I could hear God's voice so clearly day by day what's happening in my life. And people sometimes think that when they go through a trial, we must be very careful that we don't judge people and say it's because of sin in their lives, that's why you're in there. No, no. They might be going through that because they're on the right path. And the enemy is trying to take them out and bring in all kinds of things to discourage them and take them and strip them of their blessing. So we must be careful that we, we, we pray for people and not judge people in their situation. Amen. Return to your neighbor and say, no more judging. <laughs> Only loving. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So we need to make sure of that. Amen. So if some Christians found themselves in that situation, they might become bitter and say, you see, I chose to follow God and look where it got me. I'm serving in this man's house, serving. Look at you now. He's falsely accused, gets thrown into prison. Yo, those things can make you... But listen, when facing a trial, don't view everything only from your perspective. Look at it from God's point of view. It's so important to not give up in a trial and think, what's going on? There were many times we didn't have answers. But sometimes you, you, when you're falsely accused, you're forsaken, you're forgotten, trust God and the process. I mean, trust Him. Our response to challenges is extremely important as it influences both the manner and timing of our breakthrough. How you respond to a situation will determine when you come out. And now listen to me. It's very important that you keep your mouth shut while you're forsaken, falsely accused, forgotten. Because how you speak during that time will determine how you come out. If you keep saying, yeah, Allah, Allah, and you start swearing them, then you, you now, you're not coming out. Okay, Kelly, just, yeah, amen, amen, amen. Amen. But you, all you need to do is repent, say, Lord, forgive me. Oh, you know, you want to smack, I understand you want to smack, you want to hurt, you want to do, but don't, 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 don't. Don't you never say, no, don't, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> amen. You have to say, God has a plan here. Yeah? I might not see everything clearly yet, but God has a plan to get me out of this mess. He has a plan. He has a plan. Trust the plan. The great planner is planning your life. Trust him. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's watching over every step. When I sat there in Florida Lake, looking at the lake, I'm living with my, my sister there, and I'm thinking, you know, Lord, great man of God, called to do great things. Cake bastard. It's like, no. No money, no food, nothing. I'm looking at Florida Lake's water here. I said, hey, Jesus. I'm telling you, it was, I cried that day. I said, Lord, what's going on in my life? This doesn't make sense. I, this is not what I saw. I saw a dream. I saw ascending. I saw palace. This is not what I saw here, Florida Lake. <laughs> Amen. Then I could minister to a guy that was also sitting at Florida Lake a few years later. He was going through the same thing. And now I'm, I had some money and I said, no, yes, I'm I can help you. I bless you. Never judged him. I just helped him. And today he's doing much better. He's got a nice, he's doing well. But I, I, when I, I said, hey, I was there, but I sat also on that same chair like we were sitting there. <laughs> Relax, man. It's going to be okay. <laughs> so listen, when people falsely accuse you, keeping in mind that it's instigated and inspired by Satan. They're influenced by the devil. Those situations can cause you to become terribly angry. And no matter how many people you run to, explain your situation to, they end up not hearing you and understanding your side of the story. But listen to me. Don't be worried and troubled about what people think. Rejoice in what heaven knows. Don't be worried about what they think. Just rejoice in what heaven knows. As long as heaven knows and God knows your heart that you repented, that you, you know, because people will judge you by your actions, but God will judge you by your heart. That is why God, it's amazing. Some people, it's like they're not going to church every week, or they may be, 
you know, catching on nonsense and maybe still Esau. But it's like, their art is so for God and their art is so for people. And, and that's what I even witnessed recently. And it's like, God still blesses them. And I'm thinking it's because their hearts are open. They're quick to repent. They're quick to believe. That's how we should be. Now, some Christians is, yeah, I know I must forgive. I'll forgive when I want to forgive, man. <laughs> you see? Heart. God looks on the heart. The hard heart. And the children are learning today about the hard heart. They are they're learning about the hard heart. Amen. Listen, 1 Peter 2 verse 21. For to this you were called. So this is your calling. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. What did he do? He committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Listen, who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. So what does the word revile mean? It means to criticize or speak about someone in an angry, insulting, or abusive manner. It involves harsh and often hateful verbal attacks. That's what revile means. That's what they did to Jesus. Maybe that's what happened to you. Where people were criticizing or speaking about you in an angry, insulting, or abusive manner. Maybe they used harsh and often hateful verbal attacks. But what did Jesus do? He didn't, even though he, he, he was reviled, he didn't do that back. He didn't revile in return. Even though he suffered, he never threatened. But he committed himself to his father who judges righteously. He said, Father, you are my righteous judge. I trust you to judge righteously for me. You see, he's the righteous judge. He's not going to allow people to continue doing that. Eventually, you commit him. You see, when, when, when Jesus said, when they smack you, turn the other cheek, what he meant was that walk in love towards them. And when you turn the other cheek, let them dare try and smack you again. You'll see they're going to get the hand of God in that situation. Because now your righteous judge is going to speak up for you. He'll vindicate you. And he'll say, no, you're not going to do that again. Amen? Yes, we have to be careful. I mean, even there, the, 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 the one Pharaoh they took, Whose wife was it? Isaac's wife? Whatever. And, and after he was, uh, and then the Bible says, the God appeared to him and said, you are dead man if you touch it. And he said, Lord, I didn't know it was this man's wife. Amen. So we want to be careful that we don't, you know, we must take matters to God. So listen to me. Look at Psalm 109 verse 1 to 4. Do not keep silent, O God, of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful have opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They have also surrounded me with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. In return for my love, they are my accusers, but I give myself to pray. Don't give yourself over to vengeance, revenge, and hatred and bitterness. Give yourself to pray. Pray for them. Pray for the situation. They're falsely accusing you. They're accusing you. You're loving them, but they keep biting you. Now, obviously, if you're going to keep biting me, I'm going to be a bit further away from you. Because you keep it, but I'm going to pray for you from a distance. And we don't have any hatred in our heart towards anyone. Amen? But I'm saying to you, give yourself to prayer. Don't give yourself to bitterness and revenge. Let God deal with it. You see where it says, do not keep silent, O God, of my praise. When you open your mouth, God keeps silent. But when you shut your mouth and pray for them, then God's going to speak up for you. Then all of heaven's going to back you. Because when you fight, you're going to fight alone in the flesh. But when you release love towards that person or situation, you are releasing love. And you're releasing God because God is love. And then he becomes responsible for its success. So I'm not saying be a Christian format where people walk all over you. I'm saying take the matter to God and deal with it in the realm of the Spirit with love so that your Heavenly Father will deal with it for you. That's what I'm saying. Amen? And you know, that's why it sometimes looks like meekness is weakness. It's not weakness, it's a strength. I'm letting my Heavenly Father deal with it. Because in, in the natural, with my strength, I'll hurt you, Father. I will hurt you. In the flesh. But we're not going to deal with it in the flesh. We're going to deal with it in the spirit. I mean, I know some of you are strong. You can sort things out quickly. 
But that's what we, it seems like you are, damn, going like to the slaughter. Look. They take in advantage. No, no, but you're more than a concrete says. It, for them, you look like a lamb to the slaughter. You're not a lamb. To, for them, it says for the world, go read it properly. But you are more than a conqueror through him who loved you. You're more than a conqueror. Say, I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. So listen to me. We're closing off with this. This is good news. So, so remember now. Remember the, the, the purpose. Remember the dream. Hold on to the blessing. You don't want to let the enemy strip you of your blessing, of your dream. By getting into strife and getting into arguing with people. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. Let it go and let God deal with the matter. Amen. But here's the good news, verse 21 of Genesis 39, and we're closing. But the Lord was with Joseph. Even though he went to prison, say, the Lord is with me. And showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Amen. You have, the Lord is with you. God's showing you mercy. You have favor. Amen. And the keep of the prison committed to Joseph and all the prisoners who were in the prison, whatever they did there, it was his doing. It's like you can't keep this man down. You get the, the more you try and suppress him, the more he rises up. You know, it's like a, that champagne bottle, you know, the top, you push it down and it just keeps coming up. You push it up. Come on, guys, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm preaching better than you're shouting. Hello, hey, but no condemnation, guys. You, I minister freedom of condemnation from you. And, the, and it says, we're in the prison, whatever they did, what he's doing, the keep of the prison, did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. You can't keep a blessed man down. You can't keep a blessed woman down. You can't. Amen. And I'm saying to you today, don't be discouraged. Don't get into a place of being falsely accused and the enemy trying to take revenge with, with people in the flesh. No, bring that devil into God's realm of love and you'll see how he'll flee. He can't stand there. So today, I'm, I'm not making light of your pain. I'm not saying the accusation and the forsaking and being forgotten is not painful. It is, but he is the great healer. He gave his word, he gave his anointing, he heals the brokenhearted. And that's what I'm praying, that God will heal your heart. Because it was painful for Joseph. Imagine being there so many years in prison for something he never did. And yet he's got this, he's holding on to his dream. Thank God he held on to his dream. Say, I'm holding on to my dream. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm not hating. I'm loving. I'm blessing. I'm forgiving. Amen. And you'll see, surely it shall come to pass. Amen. So listen, no matter what comes against you, who falsely accuses you, or plots against you, when you know you are doing the right thing, and you know you are on the right path, then no weapon formed against you will prosper. Listen to this. Criticism is a compliment when you know what you are doing is right. Criticism is a compliment when you know what you are doing is right. It's a compliment. So don't get into, people will criticize, revile you, lie about you, say this and that all about you. Just trust, just rejoice in what heaven knows. He, is, he will vindicate you. And yes, yeah, I, I, even with me, I was so much, I messed up many times. And I thought, how am I ever going to recover from this? There's no way I can ever be used of God again with this situation. And I felt like under a load of condemnation and guilt. But you know, here comes the Holy Spirit to convict you and get you out of condemnation and just remind you, hey, I love you, Lester. Everything's going to be okay. I'm still with you. I'm still for you. And that's what God is saying to you today. He's still with you. He's still for you. I know many of you have been hurt terribly by what people have done and family and, and, and people that have forsaken you. But today, release them to God. Trust God with the process. He knows how to vindicate you. He knows how to bring you up. He knows how to bring you out. I think even of my wife, sure, she has to share testimony one day of the pain that she has had to endure of rejection from a massive level. And yet she still has to 
she would cry and then just have to pick herself up again and know that I'm loved by God. I'm loved by God. I'm loved by God. So I'm saying to you, um, you, you, I pray today that God will just heal your heart. Because I know it's painful. I know it's painful. But he's the great healer. He's the great rectifier. He's the great changer. Keep your eyes on Jesus today. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't keep your eyes on them, on the pain. No, no. On the third day, he rose again. You're going to rise again. You will rise again. Amen. And you will, and you will bless them and you will love them and you'll forgive them. And God will just do something amazing in your life. Do it God's way and all of heaven's going to back you. You're going to say, thank God I did it his way. Amen. So rejoice today. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Amen. God's with you. God's on your side. Come on, let's stand this morning. Let me pray for you before you leave. Amen. Hallelujah. God's got plans to prosper you, not to harm you, not to abandon you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Just take the person's hand next to you right now, if you can. On your left, on your right, just begin to pray for them. Pray for them. And ask God just to heal them and help them. Come on. Just pray right now. Pray for the person on your left, on your right. Even if it's your husband, even if it's your wife, pray for them. Bless them. And forgive, begin to just forgive. Forgive those who have wronged you or hurt you. Forgive them. Commit them into God's hands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we commit him into your hands today. Thank you, Father. Heal people's hearts today. Those watching online, heal their hearts today, Lord, where it's hurting, where people have forsaken them, falsely accused them, forgotten about them. Thank you that their time of favor has come. Thank you for favoring them. Thank you for favoring them. As we forgive, you favor. We forgive and we hold on to our favor. We hold on to our favor to the blessing. Today we forgive everyone of everything. We forgive our family, our loved ones, friends, colleagues, people maybe at in church. We forgive them. We don't hate anyone. We love them. And we release your love towards them. We choose to stay in the light, to walk in the light. We're not going to stumble. I pray, Father, that, that, you will, that you will just heal people's hearts in this place today. Heal their hearts today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Restore where the enemy has stolen. Restore where the enemy has taken. Restore, Father. Thank you for doing a new thing. Thank you, Lord. In the, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Man's rejection is your appointment and acceptance, Father. You can take what the enemy meant for evil and you'll turn it around for their good. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over you, devil. I take authority over all your accusations and your lies and your deceitful words that you've spoken over God's people here and against them. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every accusation, every threat, every word of judgment. I condemn those words and I command it to fall to the ground. None of these words shall bear any fruit in their lives. In Jesus' name, we silence all your accusations against God's people today. In Jesus' name, and no weapon that you have formed against them will prosper. Every tongue risen against them in judgment, we condemn it. Lord, thank you that they triumph over opposition today, this week, this month, this year. They're going to triumph over any opposition. They triumph over it because that is their covenant right as the righteousness of God. Their vindication is from you, Lord. Thank you for vindicating your people today. Thank you that they triumph over opposition today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen to me, no matter, Isaiah 54, 17 in the Amplified Classic says that you will triumph over opposition. So whatever has been opposing you, God says you're going to triumph over it. The opposition is there, but you triumph over it. In the midst of whatever opposition, you're going to triumph. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory that causes you to triumph. You are already triumphant. You will triumph in that situation. In the name of Jesus. And in the end, you're going to rejoice and see how God brought you up and out. Amen.
So, Father, I minister the blessing to your people today. I minister your supernatural peace, your love, your grace, and we thank you. Thank you, Father. I've done my part. I'm asking you now to do your part, Jesus. Come with your power. Come and confirm your word, Father, with signs following in people's lives. Thank you for doing a new thing. God's doing a new thing in people's hearts today, a new thing in your life, a new direction. God's doing a new thing. Flow with him. Flow with a great planner. In Jesus' name.